Alright viewers, um, we've got uh, a challenge here in front of us. As you can see, one of our torsion springs is broken on our garage door. So when we went to leave the garage this morning, the, uh, the door wouldn't open. It ran the track back maybe two or three feet and then eventually got stuck with, uh, with the only the weight of the one spring holding it. Um, so, first thing you need to do is, is you want to release the garage door from tension, have it resting on the ground, not, um, not hooked up to the power unit. So with that, you'll pull the red lever and then ideally have somebody else hit the button and send the little shuttle to the end here. And whenever you're working on a garage door, always make sure you unplug power to the unit so it doesn't accidentally turn on and do something while you're working on it. Second, uh, and this is probably a disclaimer, torsion springs are very dangerous. There's a, a lot of force um, tied up into these and you think of how much a garage door weighs, um, you know, probably in the, about 100 pounds. But to get that amount of force in those springs, you'll have to wind them sometimes seven, nine times. Um, and that's, you know, you're just putting more and more pressure to it. So a couple of very basic things. Get a good set of gloves um, that you have good dexterity, but they'll protect your hands. You have to envision as if the spring is always going to break when you're working with it. And a lot of times when they do break, they throw shards, so safety glasses. Um, and then the gloves as well, because as they rotate, they have a tendency, if you're holding a tool onto them, they're going to take it with you. So that may be the difference between that tool breaking your hand and just severely bruising it. Uh, maybe the difference between a piece of metal slicing through it. Um, you know, just it gives you that extra layer of protection. Ideally, you don't have to use it. Um, good sturdy ladder. And then uh, we'll start here. So as you can see, the one spring is broken. Um, general rule of thumbs, you want to replace both the springs, but this one is still under pressure. That one's still dangerous. Um, we'll come over to the drums here. These are what actually rotate with the springs. You'll want to take a Sharpie and you'll want to mark the location of the uh, drum as far as this direction as well as the location of the two set screws. That way, once we pull the springs off, you'll be able to set these drums back to their original location and you won't have to realign the garage door. Coming back over to the torsion bar. Um, so the danger area is typically going to be about right here. Uh, maybe we can take another step this way. But you want to try and stay clear of this zone between my hands while you're working on it. Ideally, you're set up over here and you're working across and out of the way. So if the bar does hit, it comes this way. Um, things fly down in here. Don't, don't put your head anything over in this area. All right, so some of the tools you're gonna need. Um, you know, again, don't follow my lead, but you can get a set of uh, torsion bar winding rods, basically half inch or five eighths rods. I've taken rebar and modified it. Um, you've got a good idea is to put tape on the end of the bar showing when it's fully inserted. So that way when you've got it into the torsion bar, you know you're locked in. Most of the accidents occur when you're halfway locked in, the bar slips out, the spring unwinds. Um, usually throwing the bar and causing all kinds of chaos. Um, there's two set screws on top of this. You may have a different style spring. They have different uh, designs out there, but there's usually some form of a screw that holds it to the shaft. That's what keeps the spring tight. You're gonna need to loosen these while having the bars in. You always have to have one bar in a lot of cases it's a good idea to have that second one there and you'll kind of roll the spring over and that's what you'll use to transfer the force. You'll want to use a uh, open-ended wrench. Again, it's kind of the same idea of if this spring lets loose on you, um, the wrench would come loose or come off versus if you're using the uh, box end or even a socket and a ratchet it has a tendency to stay on there and take your hand with it and break your wrist. So keeping those in mind, uh, just a real basic trick again, if this seems like it's out of your realm, if you're not a very, um, you know, handy person, if that makes sense, um, you know, don't be afraid to call a professional and have them fix your garage door for you. Before you do anything, again, you'll want to just basically check the load on the spring. Can you handle it? The way to do that, Insert your bar and then just gently give it a rotate. Okay, if you can take that load, that's the load that you're going to be releasing on yourself when you undo these set screws. Um, so that's just a good way to check it. You haven't done anything. If it's really hard to push on that bar, then you want to 
maybe uh, get somebody else to do this for you. So um, our next step here, we're going to loosen these set screws very slowly and we're going to take tension out of this uh, spring. If possible, it's nice to count how many winds are on it. Um, that way you can set up your new springs you'll want to set to that same level. Um, typically if your garage door is working fine and the spring just wore out and broke, you'll want to set everything back to the way it was the first time. If not, you can recalibrate them. But, uh, Go up here, inserting our uh, bar. And I'm going to start with the set screw that's the furthest to the back because I can't see it. And then I will move to the front one where I can control it a little bit better. So put a little bit of pressure on your, uh, your bar there. And then give the set screw a nice quarter to a half a turn. If the set screws are set properly, it shouldn't take much more than that to get them to loosen. So again, you'll take the pressure, loosen the set screw. Now, setting the wrench down, you'll take your other bar, and you'll want to set that. And you can see there's a little bit of an issue here because my second bar won't fit. So when that happens, you want to just come back up here and you'll just want to reset these set screws. Tighten them back down and get a bar that does fit. So again, you're tightening these set screws back. Good amount of pressure on them. Now that you've got that done, Anytime you're releasing, you want to just gently let the bar go, and you can see that it's good. I'm going to leave this bar in here in case this set screw slips. That way the bar comes down into this carrier and this reinforcing piece here, and ideally it stops the rest of the spring from exploding or flying off and potentially hitting me. So get out of the way and we'll modify that bar and we'll try it again. All right, welcome back to our garage door torsion spring change. Um, we've got the old springs removed and a set of new springs now on the door. Uh, one thing to look at before you get too carried away with the tensioning process is you want to look at your main center bracket here, your bearing point. Um, if you have any structural issues developing, um, you do not want to tighten these springs because all of that force is carried through this bracket which is attached to basically this board and then these two sub boards in the background. Um, if there's any weakness here, there's a chance that this could come loose and the springs would uncoil on you. Um, potentially a dangerous situation. So while you're getting ready to tighten up your, your springs here, um, make sure that you've got a good anchor point for all of your brackets and, uh, and be safe about it. All right, so we're about to wind our new springs that we've got installed. In uh, the last video, we checked the hardware around our central bracket. We've tightened up those bolts. Before doing anything else, we've reset our cables. So if you remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about marking those with a felt pen. Um, this is where that makes it very easy. Return the pulleys back to their marks. Set the set screws, making sure that the cable is turned tightly. So one trick to that is you'll want to set one of the drums, set the set screw with the cable turned tightly, make sure the bar is rotated, and then place a vice grips like this to where it, it makes sure that the bar is locked. Otherwise, if you allow the bar to rotate, the cable drums will turn and loosen the cable. We want to keep that tight so that it keeps, when we do loosen the springs, the pressure goes to the door versus unwinding the cables. So taking your winding bars, um, we're going to go and we're going to start turning this one. Uh, typical rule of thumb, um, there'll be instructions in your springs for the size of the door. This is a seven foot door. You're going to start at roughly um, seven and a half turns, seven and a quarter turns to start with. If the door opens really fast, it's kind of shuddery, you've probably over tightened your springs and you want to back them off. If the door barely opens at all and it, it kind of gets stalled in the center, you've under tightened. So one way we'll do is before we hook up the electric drive, we'll just test it ourselves to see the ease. Ideally, you give a little pop and the door should come to about the halfway point in a nice smooth motion. Um, whenever 
tensioning a spring, you're going to tension it like you're unscrewing it. So you're going to want to do an opposite thread of, uh, so traditionally counterclockwise would be loosening, counterclockwise looking down the spring is going to tighten it. So again, there's a nice line here showing uh, the, the spring's equilibrium point. So you'll kind of, that's a good thing to keep right in the middle. You can use this later to see how many turns you put in it by how the line distorts. So again, trying to stay out of this area here at the winding cone in case it slips. You come over. Uh, make sure you've got a wrench to tighten your set screws nearby because you're going to be putting these under tension. And then we'll start turning this guy counterclockwise, which would be this way. So then, as you're doing this, you're always wanting to make sure you leave one of these tightening rods in. I'm actually going to move the ladder just a little bit, so I'm a little bit closer here, because it will start. It will start relatively easily, but as you say, as you get towards the end, there'll be more and more pressure applied. Another nice thing is the, the tape marks on the end to make sure your bar is fully inserted. At the beginning here, I usually do, a, I'll skip a hole just to make sure it's a little bit faster. And then um, as it tightens, we will start to do one hole at a time. Always keeping pressure, making sure the rod is firmly in place. And if you need to take a break, Keep the rod tight, gently let it come against the, the base here. That way you can take the load off of your arms, you can rest a little bit. You always want to hold the rod to keep, make sure it doesn't slip out, but this way you're relatively little effort being put down if you do need to catch your breath or something like that. We'll check in at the end and we'll diagnose how we did with our balance when it's opening.